Today we will see how to evaluate the integral from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4 x over sin x plus 1 dx. Of course this integral can be evaluated using somewhat longer techniques such as multiplying both top and bottom by the conjugate and afterwards you can apply integrations by parts. For the analytical solution that you obtain at the end, you can substitute the given upper and lower limits. However, I'm going to use an alternative approach. This is a definite integral. Therefore, most likely there are some other alternative theorems that can be used. However, the last two theorems that we saw cannot be applied straight away here. That's because the lower limit right here is not equal to zero. Therefore, we are going to see a more generalized form of that theorem, which can be applied technically for any lower and any upper limit. All right, here's the theorem. Let's say I have to evaluate an integral from a to b f of x dx. This will also be equal to integral for the same limits from a to b. The function stays the same as f x will be changed to a plus b minus x dx. Now we will see how to prove this theorem. To prove, I'm going to start from the right hand side. In the right hand side of this integral, I have integration from a to b f of a plus b minus x dx. I'm going to use a substitution. So the substitution I need is u equals a plus b minus x. When I differentiate, I get du being equal to negative dx. Now I also have to adjust the limits according to the new variable u. When x is equal to a, according to this equation right here, u should be equal to a plus b minus a which is u equals b now when x is equal to b u will be equal to a plus b minus b which is a all right let's use that substitution in this integral then it will become integration the lower limit when x is equal to a the new variable u will be equal to b Therefore, the lower limit changes to b. When x is equal to b, u will be equal to a. Therefore, the new upper limit will be equal to a. We have the function f and then a plus b minus x is equal to u. So this is going to be f of u. And then we have dx. We saw earlier that du is equal to negative dx. Therefore, dx should be equal to negative du. I will keep that negative symbol outside and write du. Now, with this negative symbol, I can get rid of that negative symbol by flipping the lower and upper limits of the integral. So, I'm going to write this integration as positive integral from a to b f of u du. Now this is a definite integral. For a definite integral, the variable used has no role to play. Therefore, I can write this as integral from a to b using technically any variable. Therefore, I'm going to write this as f of x dx, thereby completing the proof of the theorem. So the question we have is integration from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4 x over sine x plus 1 dx. I'm going to label this integral as i. What I'm going to do next is to directly apply the theorem. Please pay attention to the limits. The lower limit is equal to pi over 4. The upper limit is equal to 3 pi over 4. According to the theorem, all the x's must be replaced by the lower limit plus the upper limit minus x. Since pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4 will be simplified to pi, all of these x's should be replaced by pi minus x. Alright, I'm going to label this integral as integration number 1. I'm going to write down the second integration. The limits stay the same from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. Now all the x's 
should be replaced by pi minus x. Therefore, on the numerator, I will have pi minus x. And in the bottom, I will have sine pi minus x plus 1. And then I have dx. How about sine pi minus theta? Sine pi minus theta is equal to sine theta. Therefore, this integral i can be written as integration from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. On top, I have pi minus x. In the bottom, I have sine x plus 1 dx. I'm going to label this integration as integration number 2. What I'm going to do next is, as usual, I'm going to add integration number 1 and integration number 2. If I add those two integrals, on the left hand side, it'll be 2i. On the right hand side, I have the same denominator in these two places, sine x plus 1. Therefore, I can add the numerators straight across. When the numerators are added, I have x right here and I have pi minus x right here. Therefore, those two x's will be cancelled. Therefore, the numerators will be added to just pi. Alright, let me write down that result. 2i will be equal to integral from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. On the numerator, I have just a pi. In the bottom, I have sine x plus 1 dx. Of course, this pi is a constant which can be written outside and also I can divide both sides by 2. Therefore, I'm going to write this integral as i equals pi over 2 integration from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. On the numerator, I will have a 1 over sine x plus 1 dx. Alright, now what? I'm going to multiply both top and bottom of this integral by its conjugate. I will multiply that by 1 minus sin x. 1 minus sin x for both top and bottom. Now we can simplify that. i equals pi over 2 integral from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4 1 minus sin x is my numerator and in the bottom I have 1 plus sin x times 1 minus sin x which will be simplified to 1 minus sin squared x and I have dx. Now what is 1 minus sin squared x? We know that's equal to cosine squared x. Now we can simplify this integral a little bit more. i equals pi over 2 integration from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4 on top I have 1 minus sine x and in the bottom I have cosine squared x we can split that into two pieces 1 over cosine squared x is equal to secant squared x minus sine x over cosine squared x we know sine x over cosine x is equal to tan x and there will be one more cosine x term in the denominator which can be written on top as secant x. Therefore, the next term I have is tangent x times secant x dx. Alright, now the life is very easy. Both of these functions can be integrated using the standard table of integrals. Therefore, i equals pi over 2 times secant squared x integration is equal to tan x minus integration of tan x secant x is secant x. And I have to apply those limits. The lower limit is pi over 4. The upper limit is 3 pi over 4. So when you substitute these limits, I have i equals pi over 2 times once the upper limit is substituted tan 3 pi over 4 is equal to negative 1 minus secant 3 pi over 4 is equal to negative square root 2 all that minus the lower limit tan pi over 4 is equal to 1 that minus 
secant pi over 4 is equal to square root 2. All right, now I have to simplify that. Now i will be equal to pi over 2 times we have 2 square root 2 that minus 2. Of course, we can factor out 2 from this part and simplify that with the 2 in the bottom. Therefore, the answer is i equals pi times square root 2 minus 1. All right, that's the final answer for this question. If you would like to practice the theorem with another question, here is one for you. Integration from pi over 5 to 4 pi over 5 x over cosine squared x plus 1 dx. See if you can answer this question. This upper limit could also be 9 pi over 5. For those two cases, there will be a tiny difference. Alright, that's it for the video today. Thank you.